Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and this is Automate. Being the very first episode of Automate, I figured I would go through a quick rundown of what my thoughts are for this video series. So Automate will be going over different IoT devices, uh, and IoT, if you're new to that, means Internet of Things devices, as well as different services out there to connect your internet uh, connected accounts as well as the devices in your home to automate your life in an awesome way. There will be things that are simple just to make your life a little bit easier, uh, both in your work and personal lives, as well as different cool things uh, that might not be as practical or as useful, but are just very cool uh, and give you a little bit of spice to your internet connected lives. So guys, let's go ahead and get started with the very first episode, which is going to be regarding uh, IFTTT, which stands for If This Then That, and go ahead and do a brief introduction of what that is and how to use it. All right, so what the heck is if this, then that? If this, then that revolves around what they call applets. Applets are comprised upon of two different uh, components, which are the trigger and the action. So if this trigger is met, then this action will be carried out. It's very simple. They walk you through, essentially it's uh, setting up a, a custom applet. It's only six steps. They walk you through that. And the biggest part of that is just choosing the two services that you want to connect. Uh, there's tons of different services, as you can see here. They have them kind of separated in, upon uh, by kind of category. There's applications or appliances at the very top, such as GE's uh, internet um, connected devices, two different things such as uh, do-it-yourself electronics. So if you're like if you like doing do-it-yourself uh, things, like Adafruit has a good tool for input-output um, with your custom electronics to have different triggers, so you can have like motion sensors set up with Adafruit. And you have tons of different options where you can have like the battery level of a device. Uh, and when that battery level has reached like 25%, it'll send you a notification. So you know to go grab it and plug it in. So if you have like a outdoor, you know, battery operated uh, weather station, you know when it sends you that alert that is at 25%, you can go and put a new battery on it or bring it inside, charge it real quick, uh, depending on what you have set up. Uh, so there's tons of different options out there. Uh, ranging from a wide array of things there you can saw like a whole wall of home uh like temperature controlling control uh settings uh one of the bigger known examples is nest uh, thermostat uh, you can see lighting things uh like the philips hue for example tons of different things uh social media accounts down here somewhere uh yeah here we go social media tons of different options so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, go into instagram real quick and when you go to a service, they'll all have a very similar setup to this. They'll have a little bit about the service itself, uh, what it kind of is, and then I'll have a button to connect. That'll essentially launch you to a new window or to the, web, the website itself and have you enter your username and password on that website and essentially give IF uh, or if this, then that permission to tap into that account for data. Uh, after you've given uh, the service that permission, you can uh, go ahead and start making your own applets or utilize existing applets. The next thing you'll see is this big long wall of different already existing uh, applets that people have made. Uh, and it kind of tell you like how many people are actually utilizing it uh, and what it works with. So example for this one, uh, when you set make a new post to your Instagram feed, you can automatically set your Android phone wallpaper uh, with, as that photo. So it's a very cool way to automatically update the background of your phone uh, with a custom picture without having to do, you can just post to Instagram and that's automatically on your phone. Uh, Instagram doesn't have actions, so we'll get to that in a little bit, but you can, it's not really great for following other people, but for your own purposes, it's very good. Uh, so for example, uh, you can use uh, Instagram that if you use it as your source, uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and oops, did not mean to click on that. Let's go ahead and uh, go to the at the very bottom of the list. You'll see in, uh, whatever service you're using triggers and actions. This will populate the entire list of the root triggers. These are the very basic things that the service has that can be utilized as well as the actions. You can see that Instagram doesn't have any actions. So triggers for the most part are either utilizing data on that service or taking data from that service to your other service. Uh, actions are normally getting data from another service 
and porting that data in or utilizing it in some method. So Instagram can primarily just send data out or let you know about something. So for example, one of the triggers is any new photo by you. Uh, you can have this essentially uh, send a SMS to your phone that you've posted a new photo. I don't know how that would be all that useful, but a more useful use case for that would be setting up with Twitter. So when you post a new photo, the trigger will be Instagram and set it, posting a new photo. And then the action, you'll actually click on Twitter and utilize the action on there to make a new post to set that as a, to post that picture to Twitter too. And you can do the same thing for Facebook. So there are some uh, connections on these social media sites themselves. For example, with YouTube, you can automatically post to Twitter when you make uh, upload a new video. But this kind of expands upon that selection and you can really automate your social media accounts, which is great if you're some type of like content creator, uh, whether that be a indie uh, game dev or a uh, YouTuber or a Twitch streamer or something, you can easily post to multiple sites from one root account and kind of have that propagate to the different accounts that people follow you on because maybe your fans, uh, some of them, uh, for example, if you're a YouTuber, they're pretty much all on YouTube. But for example, some of them might follow you on Twitter while others might follow you on Instagram and you want to have that same data available to them wherever they are so they can have kind of the connection with you regardless of where they are. So that's pretty much the basics of how it works. So let's go ahead and run through one quick operation uh, and illustrate how you actually make a new uh, applet. All right, so on the top right of uh, if this and that, you'll see your username. By clicking on that, you'll be given an option, an expanded menu, and you can click new applet. From here, you'll choose start the six step process to make your own custom applet. The first thing you'll do is start with the this. So if this occurs, this will be your trigger service. So keep that in mind. Back Going back to the Instagram uh, thing I was showing you earlier, this is like something like if you posted a new picture on your Instagram feed. So let's go ahead and do if this, and I've already uh, it linked uh, my Twitter account, so I'm just gonna use Twitter for example. So let's say a new tweet by me. I'm not gonna include any retweets that I do or any replies I do to people. I just want the brand new original tweets that I have done to automatically be sent to some other service. Uh, so now that I have a new uh, Twitter, uh, then I'm going to the that stage of it. This will be the action service. This will be the service that data will be pushed from. You could actually utilize the same service for both the uh, trigger and the action, which I'll get to here in a second. But for example, so this is if a new tweet by me on Twitter, then let's go ahead and do Facebook. So I'm gonna throw this to my Facebook page for Thought Provoking Tech. So if I do a new tweet, then once my internet decides to catch up to my super fast uh, ninja skills, uh, we'll get to the stage where I can actually build this applet. Come on. Uh, but this will be your action service. So this is where you'll have a list of actions. Facebook isn't all that great for actions. They don't have a lot of uh, integrations with if this and that. Twitter is actually one that has a ton. And Twitter is something you can do a lot of automation with if you really wanted to, both sending to and receiving from uh, Twitter. There we finally go. Uh, so I'm just gonna create a status message. So it didn't automatically populate, but a lot of times it will uh, based on the trigger service and the action service that you have utilized and the actually specific trigger and the specific action itself. So based upon the trigger service combined with the trigger action underneath that service, you will have a list of ingredients. These are things you can actually customize and it won't automatically populate all the different trigger options that you have. Uh, you can go ahead and fill that in. So here I can just go ahead and use my text. So those are just copy the straight text from my tweet to my Facebook and make a post on my Facebook page for thought provoking tech. Very simple. Uh, then I'll go to finish and it'll be step six of six. So if any uh, tweet by T provoking tech, uh, simply because Twitter doesn't allow me to do thought provoking tech because it's way too long, uh, then create a status message on thought provoking tech and that'll be on my Facebook thing. And you can see on the bottom, it works with Twitter and Facebook. And I recommend turning the notification off because if this is something that runs all the time, it'll annoy you to death to constantly have notifications, especially if you have, uh, if this, then that, uh, connected to your Android or iOS phone. Um, so then you hit finish and this will automatically be enabled. I actually already have this set up, so I'm not going to finish because I don't want it to be duplicated uh, and everything I post on uh, Facebook to, or everything I want to post on Twitter to be posted on Facebook twice. 
So let's go ahead and go back to new applet. And I'm actually gonna do a, an example of, with Twitter uh, and doing it twice. So let's go ahead and say a new follower. So if a new follower on Twitter for thought provoking tech, then uh, we're gonna do action service and we're gonna use Twitter again. Uh, so this is going to be uh, post a tweet. So now you can say full name is now following me on Twitter. So now let's go to the in, uh, ingredients. You can see by, even though it's on the same trigger service, the trigger I actually utilized under Twitter gave me different options for different ingredients. And you can see that only two of the ingredients are actually used automatically uh, in here. And you can go straight with this and run with it. So to essentially say that, you know, if your Twitter name is, uh, my Twitter on Twitter, I'm thought provoking tech, even though my username is uh, at T provoking tech uh, with no spaces. Uh, this will actually say the person's full name, so it'll be like, Thought Provoking Tech is now following me on Twitter, and you can send a link to their profile. This will be an easy way to do a shout out saying, hey, um, uh, thanks for following me. So here, let's go ahead and do a completely custom one. Uh, so hey, full name, thanks for following me. And it's completely automated, it's a little personalized, it gives them a name, it gets them a little bit of shout out, it doesn't do their username and stuff, but you can go ahead and uh, go ahead and link to their profile. And have a kind of somewhat customized automated response saying, hey, you know, it, it is automated, but it does at least give the acknowledgement that someone has followed you and, you know, might give it a little bit of uh, a, a little bit of a thanks. So let's go ahead and create that action. And uh, so if a new follower for T Provoking Tech then post a tweet to a tea provoking tech. I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, and you can utilize that. Hey, if you follow me on thought provoking tech, I'll automatically give you a, a, a thanks for following me. So it's just a simple thing you can do. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you found it both entertaining and informative. I hope you got a little bit better idea of what if this than, than that is, and maybe a little bit of thoughts on different ideals of how you can use it. Uh, there's tons of different options that they're probably tens or hundreds of thousands of different combinations of all the different triggers and all the different actions that you can utilize. So definitely go in there, use the discover tool, uh, play around, learn something about maybe something that you want to do, uh, and go from there. Uh, I will be posting different thoughts that I have and then different applets that I want to share in the future, uh, with ways to integrate internet of the thing devices, as well as internet, uh, your internet services out there. And it might be something that you haven't thought about, or you didn't find in the Discover tab, which there are tons of options in there, so it might be hard to find something exactly what you're looking for. Uh, so stay tuned for that, and if you're interested, make sure you subscribe uh, for to immediately be notified of that in the future. Also, there's a little bell icon next to the subscribe. If you click that, you will be automatically notified when I release a new video, and I would greatly appreciate that. So once again, guys, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe to stay tuned for more great videos from Thought Provoking Tech. And until next time, Zach out.